driver, he threw his leg over the bike and, you know, it just says, good luck, you know, keep her, keep her steady. And he, he just turned around and he gave me this strange look and away he went and, you know, waited and waited and there's no sign of the driver, you know, there's maybe four or five bikes. I heard the helicopter and I went out of the awning and looked across and I could see the helicopter hover and I thought, you know, something not right here. And the next thing, uh, Johnny Barton come down, the, he's the rider, like, liaison officer, and he, he says, you need to come with me. We start with news that Dungannon's Ryan Farkin was quitting the sport following the death of his uncle and fellow racer Trevor Ferguson. One of our most successful ever road racers has decided to come out of retirement. Ryan Farquhar is one of Northern Ireland's most successful ever road racers. He's won more than 200 times. That's what I want to do. My wife's 100% behind me. Didn't have any. I didn't have any. I was stuck in the Isle of Man, you know, after, you know, the shock of what happened. You know, my mind was doing 500 miles an hour. I started to think to myself, I've got two young girls and, you know, there's more to life than just, you know, racing. And I think I need to do other things with them. I had a really stressful 2013, you know, just running the team. You know, I had quite a few riders in between. Uh, bikes getting wrecked and, you know, the pressure of dealing with a, a title sponsor and that. I just lost control and I was in deeper than ever. So once I got 2013 out of the way, I thought to myself, well, the first thing I have to do, I have to, you know, I have to make a living. I thought the easiest thing for me to do is probably get back on a bike. It was like a weight lifted off my shoulders whenever Anne said, that's it, I'm not racing. And then it was just about a bit over a year later, and ran and sat me down. He says, "Now I've got something to ask you." So it's something I want to ask you, or something I want to tell you. <laughs> uh, well, you I made out. Uh, no, well, I think you made out that it was something you wanted to ask me. But then it's like everything, you know. What do I do in that situation? Say right, don't. At the end of the day, he's my husband, and whatever he decides to do, you know, I have to be there to support his decision. And it's our way of life. It's the way that money comes into our household, and you have all these things to think of. You know, I've decided that I'm going to get back on a bike. I'll only do six or eight meetings that I've still... Uh, I can, you know, have a, a life outside a race. And... We'll get the gun sorted. You're not getting rid of that down here in Nungannon, will you? Look at your man. The eyes just cut out of him. It's that long for me to sing daylight. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I met Jeremy would have been when the two of us went out to, to ride Roger Winfield's bikes at Phillip Island. You know, he's been great for me and my sponsors and, you know, a bit of crack. And I've, I've took him shooting. He has took me playing golf. You know, I've done loads of things together. Oh! Oh. He's very competitive in everything he does, you know, whether it's shooting or or playing pool or playing golf. He, Jeremy's very competitive. I wouldn't say I'm not competitive, but... <laughs> Nick Williams has competed at the top level as a short circuit rider. With almost 50 years of racing experience between them, Ryan Farquhar and Jeremy McWilliams still have the hunger to compete. Our whole careers, our careers were completely different. Or, you know, we're running side by side. He was rules and I was circuits. We didn't really... Didn't mix at all, you know, well at the beginning. Racers aren't the easiest to get on with, you know, they're they're always thinking about number one. They're they're alpha males and, and alpha males, you know, don't normally sort of mix very well with other alpha males. It's not often you're up this time of the morning, Jeremy. Go dirt ring. It doesn't matter, Jeremy hurts himself because he does fuck all all the week. He just lies in the house and watches TV and tweets. Everything we do is, is reaction time, you know, and, and I 
I, I can't slow my reaction time down. I'm, I'm hitting it. As soon as I see it, I want to hit it. Whenever it comes to buying drink, he isn't as fast. <laughs> <laughs> He'll always try to weigh things up to suit himself. Yep. He is very good at shooting. He's very good at golf because he gives himself maximum handicap. He's very good at pool, particularly on his own pool table, because he plays by Rand's rules and nobody else's rules. People watching the, the, this programme say, oh, don't get on, but it's all a bit of banter, you know, he enjoys the crack. Uh, I really enjoy it, you know, so that's just the way it works. Whenever I go to build a complete new bike, you know, I just wheel in a bog standard road bike, it's a commuting bike. First thing I do is just pull the bike to bits. I'm just left with a bare frame. There's a lot of stuff on that frame. There's brackets that we don't need. You know, cutting, grinding, welding, starting to bolt on the parts that, you know, I've either had made or a buy from Kawasaki. And eventually we end up with a, a bike that's sitting ready to wheel, be wheeled onto the, the grid at the Northwest 200 or the Isle of Man TT or wherever. I get a buzz from taking on uh, you know, the factory supported teams and that, you know, on, on what, you know, I, I used to call garden shed tuning. He's like a nutty professor, isn't he, up in his garage there? No education at all, really, never. I, I never liked school. I didn't get on very well at school. I was looking to do motor vehicle studies, you know, and working uh, like cars and things, but the the teacher that took that, you know, I tortured him for a few years and he wouldn't let me into the class, so I had to go and do cookery instead. Enjoy the side of it, you know, but uh, it's whenever you have too much, when you have a massive workload and a, you know, a, a very short space of time, that's whenever it gets stressful. The bikes weren't the best in 2014. You know, we had some issues. You know, we, we did discuss it. I told them they were shit. I think we lost out of it last year with no testing on it prior to the Northwest. Uh, there's no doubt about that, but but you know yourself, I'm just a one-man band, you know, trying to put five bikes together, but uh, we're well ahead of the game this year. You so know, you, at least you want to take the one again? Uh-huh. season, you know, was pretty important and, you know, it was very important for me because, the, you know, John McGuinness and Connor Cummins going were, were two competitors of mine. You know, we've come here to try and win the team event and not the individual and that, that's, that's, that's going to be a real struggle. I'm not a short circuit racer, you know, I'm a road racer and there's no pressure in me here, you know, I'm just here really to get a, a few points, the top five riders in the team score points, you know, you could say it's half work, half holiday, where Jeremy, it's, it's nearly all work for him because the pressure's on him to score the maximum points to the British team. Uh, blowing oil out of the, the overflow. And the Aussies, they complained to the officials, so the scrutineers come and looked at the problem and that, so they, they put a, a stop on the, all the bikes that were, were blowing oil out. Having a friggin' nightmare. It was getting on to other riders' visors so they couldn't see where they're going. So we, we were just improvising. Stuck a couple of old Castle GTX bottles underneath as a secondary cash tank. And uh, hopefully they do the job for a race. See, yeah, this might cure it. McWilliams versus Cameron Donald, two legends head to head. Williams and Metcher now, master and pupil from their world super sport days. Be my love next door. Right. I... 
Williams wins race two. What a turnaround. Yes. Well, I'm a bit happier now, as you can tell. <laughs> we took a bit of a hammer in the first one, but we're coming back, and they've got machine issues like, like we all have, so it could be anybody's yet. You always bring it down, don't you, Farquhar? It's almost my fault, isn't it? It is, yeah. Uh, you up for it tomorrow? The overall team score is only taken from the top ten scoring riders, accumulatively. Right. Does that understand? Aye. Easy? I didn't realise it was like that. Can we write it down for you? Yeah. Sorry, right. At least now we know. Not all as bright as you, Jeremy. I'm just a bricklayer from walking. <laughs> so, we have a better chance. We have our best chance today because going into tomorrow, we got more top ten, more top ten UK riders than they've got Aussie riders. Just run them off into the gravel. Yeah. Not like you were trying to do to me this morning. Who? You. Fuck off. <laughs> Cheeky bastard. Do you remember spelling from the next thing? I'm right. Up the inside of me, but it lifted me. <laughs> you almost fucking right over the top of him. No, you're over the top of me. He's only the high side of MG, is that what you're yeah, about? Yeah. I know there's oil on the circuit and Jeremy and uh, some other lad went down. I almost went down and lost the front, you know, but all hot and heavy at the front. More drama for McWilliams as he stalled. Yes, but why? I just went on taller. That one more time. That one more time. Yes, but why? Yes, but why? Ryan Farquhar has been one of the most consistent performers so far. I was riding as well on a short circuit as I've probably ever rode, and I just kept chipping away. And that's a one, two, three from Australia. But if the UK all make it home, they should still be leading on points overall. Yeah. Now, how it all just turns to shit, you know, the draw of a clutch, just. The clutches are crap in them, and uh, we haven't been able to fix it because we never didn't get tested them before we came here. I knew going into the last round, one, that we're in a position to win the overall award. You know, we've never done that. The Aussies have never been beat before. And two, is in my realistic chance of uh, winning the, the, the Island Classic overall on the, on the points. Even if they have their best result, we, we can still win the overall as long as we get five bikes to the finish. If we don't win this, guys, don't come back to the garage. <laughs> and his Team UK in pole position 23 points ahead. Oh, McWilliams makes a terrible start, really struggling with his clutch. The Australians absolutely dominating this race. The UK just need to get their top scorers home, and they've got the team win wrapped up. In the individual competition, it's between Cummins and Farquhar now, and they're neck and neck here. And here come the British trio. Ryan Farquhar leads Connor Cummins and Jeremy McWilliams.
<laughs> Jeremy's absolutely fucking got it, isn't he? <laughs> well, I, no, I, I reckon, you know, if anybody deserved one, it had to be one of ours and no better man than you, so. You know, it's been a fantastic experience, you know, getting involved with all you guys coming out here, you showing us the ropes. You know, you've been doing this here for, what, about 40 years now? And 50, probably. Probably 50 years, you know, I'm just... I'm just an old retired road racer that'll come and kick your asses. <laughs> 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 Cheers. It's, it's great going out there at that time of the year, but because you know, I run my own team, and I've, it, it puts a massive uh, pressure on me to, to get back, you know, to get stuck into the bikes in the workshop again. When things are at their peak, say I'm building two or three new super twins and maybe a super stock bike, hundreds of times it has been after midnight whenever I'm getting into bed. I'm very lucky if Karen, because they haven't, I'm not very good at sending emails and things like that and every sponsor you deal with you know you have to email them asking for the sponsorship and then if it's a trade sponsor you have to put in detail what you need from them I suppose at the end of the day it's really our business you know i'm here to help them you know through the day with whatever bits and pieces that he needs done it's between the two of us and anybody else that helps ryan you know whenever he's at the race meetings you know you're dependent on those folk like whereas other big race teams employ guys to help whereas we just don't have the money to do that Whenever we are out at the likes of the TT and Northwest competing against all these big teams, um, you know, we are so proud that Ryan has done so well competing against them, and that's what it's been like for years. Um, he always said, like, we are sort of fur coat and no knickers, and that's true. You know, it's not all about the money and the big teams and the budget that they have. Um, at the end of the day, the business is all done on the track. It's hard running a team to that extent. You know, on a you know on a, a limited budget. Every year, you know, going back ten years, maybe more. Once the last sticker is put onto the last bike, it's like somebody lifts a massive weight off yeah. your shoulders. It's yeah. unreal. It's a weird feeling. And once that happens, well, the bikes they're either good enough to win or they're not. It's just get on the bikes now and see how how you go. You know, and it's as simple as that. Welcome to the Vauxhall International Northwest 200 for 2015. It is event one of the Northwest 200, the Vauxhall International Northwest 200. The Northwest 200, you know, it's always a, you know, it's always a, a goal, you know, to get in the podium, you know, to get a win, you know, it's something really special. So it's wide open, but if you were betting, you'd put your money on Ryan Falkman, would you not? You most certainly would, or certainly a KMR machine. And there is uh, Jeremy McWilliams. It's, for me, it's just kind of a no-win situation, you know. Your next GP race, you should be able to come to Northwest and win. And when I don't, you know, they go, well, those road races are better than you. When the lights go out, this race is underway. Ryan Falker is in no mood to be messed about here today. Look at him. Ryan always goes from the beginning, and he's very quick off the grid. He, he, he gets away. It is still Ryan Farquhar out in front, reasonably comfortably in front. You know, when I started really putting my mind to it, I realised I could catch him a wee bit in some places. Now that Williams is closing in, that is the closest we've seen. Charging down the inside, surely he's not going to get his stop. I knew that if I was to beat him, I had to be in front of him on the coast road. It must be Farquhar's race now. He wasn't having any of that, was he, into Metropolitan? And now he takes the checkered flag and McWilliams is second. Ryan Farquhar takes his fifth win here at the Northwest 200. He's been coming here for 19 years. That has to be one of my best ever. A couple of years ago, I never ever dreamt I'd even be on the grid again, never mind sitting in the front row at the Northwest 200. And another one two for KMR Kawasaki, you know, it's just a fairy tale, really. The second race then on the Saturday, I knew Jeremy was up for it even more. You know, you, you can get close to the win in the first race, the pressure's on for race two. So let me tell you about this one I got. And when the lights go out, this race is on the way. Number 77, Ryan Farquhar, but right in his wheel tracks is Jamie Hamilton. He is, but look at the slipstream these two are getting. Jeremy McWilliams and uh, Christian Elkin. Towing right up on the back of Hamilton, looking for a way to get past him. That would put them four wide. It has put them How? four wide. That was so close. <laughs> 
Trying to keep up with this man. He's trying to keep up with Jeremy Mitt Williams, but he's going for... Oh, 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 what was that? Oh, it was all over the place. Sliding into the corner. The two bikes they were that evenly matched. Whenever Jeremy was my slipstream, he was fit to maybe pass me in the brakes, and you know I'd do the same. And these two are pulling away together, aren't they? It's but Williams and Farquhar. So we're that close to each other, you know. I'd look over at him, and he was giving me the fingers. Oh my goodness! <laughs> what are you so, I reckon that last one home buys the beers, isn't it? That's <laughs> what, what is. You know, in the next uh, straight or whatever, I'd come out of his slipstream, I'd go to the right hand side of him, and I'd give him the fingers, and we're just looking over and laughing. I try to wind him up a wee bit when we're we've got all that time. Slipstream is is the break, is concentration a wee bit. Whenever come the last lap, he ran onto the, the dirty part of the track over the camber of the road and give it a handful and it went side road. He's, oh, he's oh, nearly threw himself me. out of the seat. They saw this and I thought, bloody hell, Jeremy, don't, don't be crashing that bike, you know, and he did for the, for the TT for Lee Johnson. And Jeremy McWilliams absolutely on the limit. So Ryan farquhar has got a lot to do, but it's not going to happen. Jeremy McWilliams takes his second win here at the Northwest 200. Enjoy the the banter that you get from the you know from the road racing fraternity here over that, but so it's kind of nice to to, to stamp your authority on it and get a win, eh? Like even even after you know this length of time, it's still. You know, when I think of that day, it just annoys me so much. I started to think, you know, has something happened to the bike? That's why I kept, you know, beating myself up so much about it. But the, the place they, you know, they took the bike and, uh, you know, the, the ring scrutineers or whatever, and to make sure that the bike was 100%, you know, there was no mechanical failure. It's one of those things that we can't turn the clock back and we just have to move on with it. It's not that you don't care, really. You just try to, because that's what you do, you just try to blank it out. And, you know, there, 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 there's a time comes whenever you start thinking to yourself, you know, Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. You know, every rider thinks it's never going to happen to them. You know, but it's like I say, it's like a, it's like a, an addiction. It must be the adrenaline rush, you know, and the the buzz you get from speed. You know, we get addicted to it. You know, just the same way a smoker gets addicted to nicotine. It would be great at times if you could get you know, like a, a, a tablet, you know, to, to counteract that, you know, whatever it is in your system, to get it, you know, to get it away completely. But to, to be fair, like, I do love racing, and that's how I make my few quid, you know, to try and, uh, you know, to try and put bread and butter on the table. So many p times you could go out and meet people and say, well, you get that man of yours off them bikes, he's going to get himself killed. And see, people don't think about what they're actually saying to you. If I was speaking to someone and their son was in the army or their, their husband was a policeman, I would never say anything like that to them. As for saying that, you know, the riders are selfish, you know, at the end of the day, Ryan is providing for me and the girls and himself. You know, it's, it's a dangerous sport that he does. But there's so many worse things. There's men out there that don't attempt to, to provide for their family at all. I just can't wait till the race was over and he comes back in. <laughs> and it's always been the same and that's just, it's never gonna be any different. He's been so successful. He's not a rider that crashes. You know, sometimes I just fear, will our luck run out? Breaks into the Armoy village for the first time. Looks like Farquhar's lining up. Yeah, there he is, pulling out around the outside. 
I've broken a few bones. I broke my ankle and a couple of bones in my hand. But but apart from that, I've been very, very, very lucky, you know, for the for the mileage that I've done. Farquhar, he's lining up McGee here. By gummy isn't off quick through there onto the laggy dam. Exactly the same move. He's got the power there. Lap record for Ryan, 1 minute 50.379. People out there probably think we're all mad, but yeah. when you ride a bike, it's capable of doing 200 plus mile an hour down a, a small country road with, you know, with no speed limit. You can go as quick as you want. It doesn't really get much better than that as far as the boys goes, does it? No such problem for Ryan Farquhar. He exits the Bellini Cross for the final time. Little look over the left shoulder. Win number 12 around Armoy. He's going to take the checkered cloth any moment now to take that win and that new lap record. I've asked all my sponsors along today, you know, just for a day's crack, you know, come and shoot a few players. So then tonight, you know, we'll go back to, to my bar, we'll have a big team. He told me he can't head straight in front of the camera. So let's get the cameras back out again. <laughs> Couldn't let him get away with a straight today, could we? Not on his own day. The best gun in the world and the best shells in the world is the drivers, the problem. <laughs> you just have to keep practicing. For me, if you get to the end of the year and Ryan's got all the racing over him and he's well, that's a successful year in my eyes. Couldn't have done it without all my sponsors, you know, and everybody knows and all my helpers and that there. Probably the, the the biggest one needs the biggest thanks to all is my wife Karen, how she puts up on me and the friends at all. You know, it all on Jeremy as well, you know, even though he's a pain in the ass at times and he's took prize money off me at the Northwest again. Just wanna say a big thank you and hopefully hopefully we can do it all again next year. Cheers. <laughs>